to do is paint this that nice copper color that the background is. I just kind of like that. And I'll paint this first. That way any overspray is not going to hurt anything. Because when I paint the, uh, the actual stove, I'll probably just, in fact I will just, it's in a can, just a, just a flat can, so I'll use a, a brush for that. So here we are. That's what the stove is going to look like. I decided to paint the door copper, which is also a heat resistant paint. Uh, I've painted the whole stove with a flat black heat resistance or, or high temperature paint, I guess. And the top, and then the little railing, the dish rail or pot rail or whatever. And then that's the backing that I made for it. You probably have already seen that, but if not, we're seeing it now. And that goes behind the stove as it is, um, just a few inches out from the wall, so that the uh, so it shields the wall from the heat. So there'll be uh, probably four inches of space or whatever from the from that plate to the wall, and then another maybe four to six inches for the stove uh, to give me. And it's not going to be, it's not like a house stove where it's going to be running, you know, when you might not be there or whatever. So, anyways, that's how she turned out. Not bad. Paint's still a bit wet, so if we can pull the door open a bit, we can see inside there. The only thing left to do, is so you can see on the door, on this fringe part here, and all the way around, is where the... Uh, that fiberglass cordage goes there that seals it to make it airtight. You can see a little wee bit of it is still on the bottom there, but it's obviously all torn off and messed up and three quarters of it's missing. So I'll have to clean that little groove out there and buy some more of that stuff and replace it. But uh, So that's that. And the next time, now I made the bear paw uh, feet for it, which aren't on it right now, of course, uh, because the, the legs are still a little bit wet from the... From the uh, from the high temp paint so we'll just have to let that go so the next time you see this I expect it'll be mounted in the trailer and you'll be able to see it in all its glory in its final resting spot. It's uh, a fair ways out from the wall still because I haven't uh, marked and cut the hole for the pipe out the back for the for the smoke pipe and uh, I'll put a different board underneath it to make it look nicer and it doesn't have its little bare feet on it yet so it'll get that too. So maybe tomorrow I'll get it anchored in there get the hole cut. Next time I'm in the town I'll buy some pipe and uh, we'll get a chimney up and give it a whirl. Now this winter, for the first time since I started this, I'll actually be able to work on it during the winter. Even though it's not insulated, it's not that big an area. And with that thing burning away in here, uh, it'll bring the temperature up warm enough to, to keep working. I cut this out of that metal. I cut it out kind of jagged here. Uh, on both ends a little bit and the reason I did that was because I want to paint it up um, to look a little bit like bark or something. <clears throat> when I redo the door here um, it's a good solid door but it definitely needs uh, a good sanding down there's some paint peeling on it and uh, you know it just needs a real good needs a little love and a paint job. As far as the doorknob goes <clears throat> and the latch I've taken this piece of antler and uh, cut it off short like this. This is the butt end of it so I get all the gnarly end on the end. 
I've drilled a hole through the middle here, it's 3 8 with a smaller 3 16 hole beside it and I've joined them like a keyway you can see that and I've made this keyway and the whole idea is and it's all welded together and then the piece is welded on top that's going to go through there and press in so that it interlocks into the keyway a little closer here into the keyway in in the antler here and then I'll probably put um, that's quite snug and I'm gonna to have to tap it in that's what I want I want it tight um, I'll probably put a little epoxy in there just just because um, this never really it never has to come out again so and this antler is I don't know if you've ever worked with antler or tried to sand it or cut it but this stuff's really tough so it's not it's not going to be easily damaged <clears throat> so this will sit down and I've recessed this um, large enough in diameter so that when this pushes right down inside into the base there uh, I took a shotgun shell you can see the blue there I cut the plastic off which was the casing for the shot and I kept the brass end and so this brass end will be the finish here let's just take that off we'll press in to here and be the finish for the doorknob and the uh, it doesn't really serve a purpose other than decoration it just means that we don't have to look at this part um, <clears throat> you can't I mean this there's no security value in it because that's welded solid and once it goes through the the latch will go through like that there will be another piece on the other side that it will go through uh, as well and then it will either be threaded or welded to a flat bar and uh, and then as I turn the doorknob the bar the rod going through the bar inside will open or close um, once I get the another piece in here in the weather stripping it it will make a solid mount to this here and, and it'll make a good lock um, when you're inside. Now when I'm outside and I'm leaving it uh, I'm going to have to either put a, a clasp and a padlock or um, a deadbolt or something else but I haven't really decided. I have a couple of other ideas too so I haven't really decided how it's going to go but we'll uh, I'm sure we'll come up with something. My original thought I took my plasma cutter and a piece of that steel off the side of an old 200 gallon oil tank. I used, uh, I have a couple of those old tanks now and so I've cut them up for for the material. They're, uh, they're quite solid material. My original thought was to make this as the uh, the plate for the door but in order to get enough detail I had to cut it a little bigger than I wanted so this is actually a bit too large to fit there because of the recessing in the door it would sort of hang out all over as I don't know if you can tell it's separation on there but uh, it just wasn't going to work so what I'm going to do with it now is uh, when I get a couple of switches I'm going to have some 12 volt lighting in here so when I get a couple of switches I'm going to paint this up moosey color and then I'll put a, a, a couple of notches in the middle here and uh, use it as a switch plate just looks kind of cool so now that I've made it I kind of don't want to not use it so what I'm doing is putting some actually self-tapping screws but I like to give them a little head start just so I don't have to wrestle with it um, this should be done on any installation in your house or anywhere else but most definitely with the vibration that this is going to get um, and I'm going to mount at least one bracket up here probably two I cut a section of the wall out just just an inch and a half smaller than this metal plate again that's a piece of that well, that oil tank's been the greatest thing for me. I'm cutting that up into all sorts of things. And I cut the hole out here. These these tend to not be perfectly round once you clip them together, but it's close enough. I'll put a, a collar on that, um, perhaps on the inside, but at any rate. So I'm drilling this to put the self-tapping screws on. It'll go up. This is a six inch pipe because it was a six inch outlet on the stove. But the old chimneys used to taper as they went up. And sometimes I've heard that the um, you don't get enough draw in a small building like this to get the fire burning properly. So I'm going to have a vent right below the stove to draw a little bit. You've got to remember this is going to be all boxed in. There's going to be like a, a garage storage here. The generator will be here. So this will be a small section in the middle that will come out to the edge. And it will be sealed in. And this whole area in the middle here will be heated. I'm not going to insulate the wall from, um, well, from mostly from the edge across so that I get more heat in here 
Um, and that any batteries I have in here or generators or whatever will just be kept a little bit warm by that. So what I've done is I've drilled very small holes, much smaller than the size of the screw, just enough to get that self tap or a head start. And, and then they go in real nice. What I've also done here uh, in an attempt to get more draw, more draft, uh, is I've gone from the six inch pipe, I put in a reducer and I finished it off in two lengths, uh, two 24 inch lengths of five inch pipe. And that will be something similar to the actual chimneys, the old stone and um, tile chimneys that were tapered. So this might give it just a little more draw, a little more velocity basically. Uh, we'll see how it works. I can always switch it back easy enough. It's actually not bad because the colder intake will be inside this little section here that I'm going to be building in. So, and it, so the area will be somewhat heated, but there will be a vent down here somewhere so that it will come in under the stove and that will give it just, just enough extra air. It's a small enough building that uh, with the size of the stove in there, you, you know, I could sleep in there quite safely with a window open and still have more than adequate heat. That stove is capable of heating probably five or six hundred square feet easily. This trailer is 128 square feet, so um, I could probably turn this into a sauna quite simply. I guess we'll find out. So it's, uh, I got rained out here uh, today, so I didn't get the, the work finished on the uh, chimney yesterday or today because, uh, not because of the rain. So I haven't got the entire chimney on because there was no no brackets or support for it and it's you know it's relatively heavy and it's just hanging off the, the bracket on the back here so I didn't want to push it. However, this is the first fire in the stove. Um, the stove was used when I bought it so I have no clue how many years it might have been since it was going. But it's going again. New life. So that's what it looks like. And uh, that'll be the conclusion. I'll move in just a little bit here so you can see it better. There. So that's the conclusion of the update for this, this time around. Um, as far as the tips for the end of the, the week goes, since we're talking about fire, I'm going to talk about these little fire starters I make. Now this is just the bottom of an egg carton. You cut the little cup part off the bottom and you end up with the little cups that the egg sits in. These are the first ones I made and I cut the, the, as much of the whole cup level with the carton as I could and I just filled it with um, my wife's old candles that are there's not much left of them. I melt them down and then I stick a little wick in there. And I've stopped making them quite like this because by the time I lit this thing you almost didn't have to light a fire. Like that thing will burn 25 minutes. So you could probably heat your tea just on this. So I built the same thing exactly, only I cut the carton way down. I left a little bit of a fringe so that it starts and the wick and just a little bit of wax. You could put, while the wax is still wet uh, when you're pouring it in there, you could put chips of birch bark or whatever in there, but it's really not necessary. Now this will burn for about between 10 and 12 minutes. So that's plenty long enough if you've got fine enough tinder, even if it's damp, to, to get things going, and, unless it's soaking wet. So. They're, they're dead simple to make, just old stubs of candles that are left over. I have an old soup can that I melt them down in on top of my wood stove in the winter time. Um, egg cartons obviously are, you know, everywhere. Cut the little cups off the bottom, make a dozen at a time. And I don't use them all the time, only if I really needed one. Normally, you'd, you know, you don't have uh, any problem getting the fire going as long as you've got some birch bark. But uh, two or three of these in your pack, you know, if you really get in a pinch, that's going to get you going. So I want to thank you for watching and if you liked it please hit the like button. If you haven't subscribed please please do. Share it with anybody you think that might like it. We'll see you the next time.